So one thing that I do in my research at the Giza Plateau is uh, make some sense of the markings that are all around the Great Pyramid. Now, Egyptologists like John Romer, Mark Lehner have said that the markings outside the Great Pyramid, many of them seem to be used to help build the pyramid, maybe as uh, architectural guides, as building guides. But then John Romer also says there's a life-size blueprint on the east side of the Great Pyramid that's a one-to-one -one life size blueprint. So that would obviously have a very functional purpose. But I've also contended that there are many marks that are meant to be symbolic and even prophetic. So I just want to look at the east side boat pointings and just to show the kind of thing that I that gives evidence that I think the builders of the pyramid left us messages not just inside the pyramid and its incredible geometry, but also on the outside. So you can see here we've got a uh, a satellite image of the Great Pyramid uh, from Google Earth, and then an elevation view from the east side uh, there. So let's take a line from the bottom of the southern trench to the uh, east side of the Queen's Boat Pit. Now I'll call that a boat pit because it's shaped somewhat like a boat pit. The other two, the trenches there on the east side, they're called boat pits by Egyptologists, but there's no evidences that there was ever a boat in them. And the two of the housings you see on the south side of the Great Pyramid there, those are near where the two boat pits were found on the southern side, and they're completely different shape, and boats were in both of those. So on the south side, those were plainly two boat pits. But the trenches on the east side, there's, there's no evidence, I'm going to call them trenches, not boat pits, because there's no evidence there was ever boats in them. And I think they uh, served other purposes, including the building of the Great Pyramid. I think the hydrology that... Uh, was used uh, to, to lift blocks and stuff, those were in use for that. So anyways, we'll start with this uh, southern uh, part of the, the south trench and uh, the line that goes to the back of the Queen's Boat Pit. So uh, that happens to be 138 meters, which is the height of the Great Pyramid without its top. In other words, its present height. And it's also at the slope angle of the Great Pyramid. Very interesting. So. If we put that over here, that's the height. That's the length of that line. It's the same height as the Great Pyramid. And that is, a, it's at the, uh, just very close to the, the angle, the slope angle of the Great Pyramid. So it, just immediately, it seems we're getting some connections here. Okay, and then if we put one, put that same line right there, it goes from the base of the Great Pyramid, from the ground level, you know, through the, the side of the, uh, the relieving, the, the, the uh, chevron atop the relieving chambers, okay? And then if we started at the bottom of where that the, the pit goes to, below the subterranean chamber, it goes right through where the well shaft enters the descending passage, right, right through where the, uh, uh, you know, near where the grotto is, where the ground level meets the well shaft. And so, you know, th those seem to be, there. again, those are the same angle and the same length as that line we're looking at. All right, let's look at another one. Let's take the north side of the southern trench and take it to the same place there, the eastern part of the Queen's Boat Pit. And so when we take that line on the pyramid, it goes to the end of the uh, uh, south uh, Queen's Chamber air shaft, and then taking it from the base again, it goes right to the chevrons above the relieving chambers, and then it goes right through the middle of the Queen's Chamber and hits the end of the north uh, air shaft uh, out of the Queen's Chamber. So again, just seems to be some incredible pointings here. All right, let's take another line now. Let's go from the eastern part of the, uh, the Queen's Boat Pit to the southern part of the northernmost trench on the east side of the Great Pyramid, okay? So uh, starting from the entrance to the Great Pyramid, it goes right to the point in the, in the bottom of the Grand Gallery where the air shaft uh, intersects the southern air shaft, excuse me, the, uh, the northern air shaft, from the Queen's Chamber, and then taking it from the uh, point where the ascending passage goes up from the descending passage, it goes right to the corner of the Queen's Chamber. So again, it seems like some rather significant connections between these apparently meaningless, you know, boat pits and trenches on the east side of the Great Pyramid to these connections inside the Great Pyramid. Now let's take that same line, but instead of stopping at the southern trench, the southern part of the northern trench, let's take it right through to the Great Pyramid itself, or to the, the edge of it. And so starting from the end of the uh, 
Queen's Chamber North shaft, it goes right to the southern uh, air shaft out of the King's Chamber. So, you know, rather remarkable, I think. And then now let's take from that same point and let's go up to the northern part of the uh, northern trench there. And putting that in here, starting from the base of the Great Pyramid, it goes right through the uh, corner of the Queen's Chamber and it goes to the tip of the Queen's Chamber south air shaft. You know, incredible. And then uh, taking it from where the ground meets the descending passage, it goes right to the top of the chevrons above the relieving chambers in the Great Pyramid. And then finally, we go right through these, the really uh, incredible granite plugs. The, the, uh, the first part of the ascending passage is impossible to pass. There are three granite plugs in there. And again, all that part of the pyramid is limestone, but there are these three granite plugs blocking the way up. So going right through those, and then you come to apparently nothing, but that's where the void is. So uh, my simple point here is that these markings that appear to be mundane, they have no meaning. It shows that it seems to me there is some kind of connection between the outside of the Great Pyramid and the inside, and that's where I've been focusing a lot of my research. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy this and want to continue the search with me to continue the hunt to chase down secrets and mysteries on the Giza Plateau.